Welcome to the Nat Theo Podcast, where we explore nature, the Bible, and what both of them show us about our Creator God, who made this wild and wonderful world. I'm your host, Erin Lynham. I'm a certified master naturalist, Bible teacher, and author, and I am so excited to explore God's Word and His created world with you. I've been thinking a lot about wildfire because it was three years ago that the largest wildfire in Colorado's written history was burning only a few miles from my home. Today, I want to share with you a very personal story about what it was like to live with wildfire for three months. My kids are also going to hop on and share about what they experienced during that time. Have you ever been near a wildfire? A wildfire, also called a forest fire, can be very devastating. But today, We're also going to learn about why wildfire is important and what important jobs it does. Here's our trail map. We are going to look at what is it like to live through a wildfire? And can anything good come from a wildfire? We're going to look at how a tree can be born from a wildfire. And finally, we are going to learn how we can grow and do well after hard times in life. Before we begin, the episode activity guide for today's lesson includes a lot of photos and links to videos of the wildfire that I'm going to talk about today. So have your guide handy so you can really come along and experience that wildfire as we did. And if you would like to access the episode activity guide, you can join the Nat Theo Club at the link in today's show notes or at erinlinum.com slash natheo. When you join the Nat Theo Club, you will receive all of our past episode activity guides and a new activity guide each time an episode airs. These guides include things like activities and further information on each lesson and additional resources and photos and videos to help you become a young naturalist and learn even more about God's wild and wonderful world. Plus, when you join, you're also helping support our show and future episodes. On August 13th of 2020, my husband told me that a small fire had started up in the mountains where we like to hike. Immediately, my stomach sank. We knew that around here, wildfires can spread very quickly and become out of control. And this fire was burning around a lot of the trails that we enjoyed hiking together as a family. I couldn't have known it that morning, but that small fire would grow to be the largest wildfire in Colorado's written history. It would actively burn for over three months. And while it started way up in the mountains, it would grow and spread and burn within a few miles of our home. It was called the Cameron Peak Fire. And I'll let my kids share with you about what they experienced during that time. Zeke, what do you remember about our fire? I remember um, orange light flickering across the foothills at night. I remember ash everywhere. Like... I went out one morning and found out covering our windshield to our car and I remember bad smells all day and night it and I remember being bored because you couldn't go outside as much yeah that was a hard part huh yeah was there anything you were nervous about um the orange flickers across the foothills that I was nervous they'd get closer and closer and eventually swallow everything in their path up. Allison, what do you remember about our wildfire? I remember being on top of this hill and seeing these planes flying over the smoke pouring pink stuff called slurry all over it. Yeah, the slurry helped to suppress the fire, right? Yep. What else do you remember? Um... I'll be in our old neighborhood, the drainage, like those canal things on the sides of the roads were filling up with ash. 
Will, what do you remember about our wildfire? Um, it was, it smoke was spraying through the sky. Yeah. Um, the, the smoke was clouding out the sun, which made it red. It made the sun red? Yeah. Yeah, the sunsets were kind of crazy, huh? Mm-hmm. Is there anything you were nervous about? If anyone got hurt. Anything else you remember about when you would go outside during that time? It was always smoky. Like my kids, I have vivid memories from those months. I remember looking out the window every day and seeing a massive plume or tower of smoke coming from the mountains. On bad days, when the wind would pick up and the fire grew, that huge plume or tower of smoke, it would stretch out across the sky and sometimes over town. Those clouds are called pyrocumulus clouds. Pyro refers to fire, and cumulus means a towering cloud. A pyrocumulus cloud happens when a massive fire begins creating its own weather. These clouds have ash in them from the fire, and so they often appear very dark, and they can even produce lightning and wind, making a wildfire even worse. The pyrocumulus cloud wasn't the only strange thing about living with a wildfire. There were some days, you guys, when the entire sky was dark gray and orange. It looked like a bruise. And the smoke was so thick some days that we couldn't even go outside because it would fill our lungs. On some days, ash from the fire fell like snow from the sky and it piled up on our cars and in the road. A few miles from where we lived, people began having to evacuate. Do you know what evacuate means? It means to move yourself away from a dangerous situation or place. Sometimes these evacuations are voluntary and people can decide for themselves whether they want to stay or leave. But many of the evacuations that were happening in our fire were mandatory. This meant that people were forced to leave their homes because the fire was growing and spreading toward them and it was not safe to stay. If you have experienced a wildfire, or maybe from hearing our story today, you can picture just how hard this time was. We so badly wanted to get out and go explore and be in nature, but we couldn't because of all the smoke and because so much of the forest and the trails were closed because of the quickly spreading fire. During that time, I was learning a lot about wildfires from our own experience, but also because I was curious and I was researching it for my studies as a master naturalist. On that note, I have a quick word for the parents and caregivers listening. I share much more in depth about our experience with wildfire in my new book, Rooted in Wonder. In it, we share our story in much more detail. And if you've ever wondered how to talk to your child about natural disasters, God's plan for earth, his sovereign protection, or conservation from a biblical standpoint, Pick up a copy of Rooted in Wonder, Nurturing Your Family's Faith Through God's Creation on Amazon or wherever you buy books. You know what was so interesting about what I was learning? Fire is important and even necessary, and good things can come from wildfire. You see, wildfire is a natural way of restoring a landscape. To restore something means to bring it back to its original condition. It's kind of like a fresh start for the forest. You see, many forests or landscapes need to burn from time to time, and fire plays an important role in burning up old, dead trees, fallen leaves and pine needles, or any other underbrush or plants that don't belong there. And after a fire, the soil and landscape is much healthier and able to grow back stronger. But 
If you are the one experiencing a wildfire and afraid that it's spreading near to your house, it's hard to think about those good things. And that's okay, because ultimately, human lives are much more important than the landscape. So when it comes to wildfire, what's most important is making sure that people are safe. I want to share with you another part of our wildfire story where I got to see God at work. The fire had been burning for over a month and there was a particular weekend when it became very windy and the fire was growing like crazy. It was completely out of control. The sky was dark gray and orange and there was ash falling everywhere. My family and I drove up to a mountain to get a better view of the fire spreading across the mountain range. I actually have some video and pictures from that weekend, and if you're using the episode activity guide, you can scan the QR code to see the fire. As we were watching the blaze, there was a man standing by us, and he pointed out his house down the hill. He said that his wife and kids had already evacuated and gone to a safe place in town because they were afraid that the fire was going to come toward their house. The crazy thing is that we were expecting snow. Now it was only September, which is really early for snowfall. And the man said that if the snow did not come by the next day, his house would burn up. We kept praying and praying for snowfall. And you guys, do you know what? The next morning I woke up and I drew back the curtains to see a fresh blanket of snow on the ground. I gathered my kids to the window and I read to them Job 38, 22 to 23, which says, have you ever gone into the storehouse of the snow or seen the storehouses for hail, which I save for times of trouble? This verse and seeing the fresh snow outside, it helped me to remember that God is ultimately in control of the weather. Although the weather often operates by the systems that he put into place back at creation, he can also intervene and change things if he wants to. I love how we see Jesus controlling the weather in Matthew 8, 26 to 27. Jesus and his disciples, they were on a boat when a great storm began to blow and the boat was being swamped. This means that water was coming up over the sides of the boat and the disciples were scared as I would be too. Jesus was actually sleeping and his disciples, they woke him up and here is what happened. Jesus answered, why are you afraid? You don't have enough faith. Then Jesus got up and gave a command to the wind and the waves, and it became completely calm. The men were amazed and said, what kind of man is this? Even the wind and waves obey him. Don't you love the disciples question after they watched Jesus command and calm the storm? They asked, what kind of man is this? Even the wind and waves obey him. I was reminded of this as I stared out at the snow that morning. Even the snow obeys God. Although the snow did not completely put out our wildfire, it did slow it down enough for the firefighters to make a plan for how to get it under control. And the man that we met up on the mountain that day, his house did not burn. So we can understand that when a wildfire is close to town, the most important thing is to protect people's lives. And we've seen that God can do that by intervening and getting involved. He is our ultimate protector. But we also learn that wildfire has an important job in giving the forest a fresh start. You see, when a wildfire is way back in the wilderness and it's not threatening people, it's often left to burn in order to help the forest. One way it does that is by clearing out old dead trees and planting new ones. That's right, wildfire can plant trees. Some plants, including pine trees, which fill many forests here in Colorado, 
have something called a serotonous seed. A serotonous seed cannot open up and produce a new baby plant unless it is touched by extreme temperatures such as wildfire. When a wildfire burns, those seeds can burst open and make new baby plants. This is amazing to see, and I get to see it very often where I live. We often hike through forests that have been affected by wildfires, including the fire I'm talking about today. And while the older trees are black from the fire or fallen, there are new baby pine trees all around growing healthy and strong. So while a fire can look like it's destroying a forest, it is also paving the way for new growth. There are other plants that also thrive and do well after fire, including a beautiful bright pink flower called fireweed and aspen trees. You know what I love about seeing pine trees and fireweed and aspen growing after a fire? It is a beautiful picture of how God can grow us through hard times. Have you been through hard things? Maybe you remember how hard it was when COVID hit a few years ago, or you've lost a pet or someone you love. Maybe you've been through a big and hard change like moving to a new town or switching schools. Maybe you've had a hard time with a friend or you've struggled to do well in a subject at school. Because this world is broken by sin, we will go through very hard things in life. But do you know what? Just like new plants growing after a wildfire, God wants to bring new life and growth as we go through hard times in life. I want to read you a passage of scripture. And as I do, perhaps close your eyes and picture that pine cone with the serotonous seed bursting forth in a wildfire and planting a new baby pine tree that then grows big and tall. Romans 5, 3 to 5 says, We also have joy with our troubles, because we know that these troubles produce patience, and patience produces character, and character produces hope. And this hope will never disappoint us, because God has poured out His love to fill our hearts. He gave us His love through the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to us. What does this passage mean? It means that through those troubles, those hard times, God is developing our character. He is making us stronger and he is growing our faith and showing us his hope, which does not disappoint. Listener, God never leaves us alone in hard times. He is always with you. Deuteronomy 31.8 promises us this. The Lord himself will go before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forget you. Do not be afraid and do not worry. You see, God is faithful. What does faithful mean? It means we can completely trust God. We can always count on him. He always loves us and he never changes. In Isaiah 43, God promised that he would protect his people, the Israelites. I find great comfort in these words because although he spoke them to a specific people, they show us God's heart for us, his children. Listen to what he said in Isaiah 43, two to three. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you cross rivers, you will not drown. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned, nor will the flames hurt you. This is because I, the Lord, am your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. When I read that passage, I think about, yes, how God protected us during the wildfire that I told you about today. But I also think about how he goes with us and protects us through the many wildfires of life. And I don't mean the physical burning flames of wildfire, but the hard things that we go through. The next time you are going through a hard thing in life, think about wildfire and the pine trees and fireweed and aspen trees that grow after. 
Remember, God can use all the hard things to grow your faith and help you to trust him more. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. You see, God is always at work in your heart and mind, even and perhaps especially through the hard things. Here's a challenge for this week. Go to a beautiful place in nature. That might be the park down the street, a trail or a meadow, or even your yard. Spend a few minutes thinking about a hard thing that you have been through. Then pray and thank God for how he is growing you through it. If you can't quite see the growth yet, ask him to help you to trust him and to see him working in your life. Remember, he is faithful and we can count on him. Remember to grab our resources that go along with this episode. You can access our episode activity guides when you join the Nat Theo Club. And you can learn more about wildfire and God's plan and protection in my book, Rooted in Wonder. And you can print and download a free coloring sheet for today's episode. All those resources can be found in the link in today's show notes. Thanks for listening and sharing the Nat Theo podcast. Join us next time as we continue exploring God's wild and wonderful world together.